Hey guys, welcome to another session of React. I'm going to make a series of videos where we are going to discuss about React hooks. In this session, we are going to discuss about the most powerful and useful React hook that is useState. So before we start, please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to receive all the updates. So what are React hooks? So React hooks were introduced in version 16.8 and they allow us to define the state inside the functional components. Until React hooks used to define and modify the state inside the class components only. But with React hooks, you can define the state inside the functional component also. So I have the user contains the functional components that we created in our last session. If you haven't watched it, please refer this suggested video and also I will leave a link in the description of the video. To demonstrate the use state, I am gonna show and hide this user section. So when user clicks on the toggles button, we are gonna show and hide it. So first of all, let us import the react hook use state. Import react and we are gonna destructure it use state and we imported it and how to define it use state and we are gonna call it like this so use state is a function and it will return the array of two values the first value is nothing but the current state we define and the second value is the function that is used to update the state and here we are not passing anything so let us see the result constant array as I said it is going to return the array equal to use state of and we are not passing any value just console it console.log here save it and let us go to our browser and press f12 you can see that array of two values as i said so first one is undefined so we didn't set any value so when you don't pass anything the current state value will be undefined and the second one is the function that is used to update the state and we are gonna destructure this array so i am going to name it as a show so our current state name is show because we are gonna hide and show this section and second one is the function to update the state show set show and here we're going to pass default value true because by default we would like to show the user section i have already created the two css classes hide and show and hide will remove the user section from the dom whereas show will do in reverse let us keep this user header and user body inside one div so that we can apply the css to the parent element that is div and right click format document so let us add the class class name so here we are going to set the class conditionally so this is one of the interview question like how you add the css class conditionally in react so when show is true by default the value is true now so when show is true then add the css class show and if it is false then add the css class hide so currently the value is true so it always show it so make it false now the state value is false then you can see that it is removed from the DOM because this hide CSS class will be added to the div and we have the display none so it will remove the section from the DOM so change our current state to true so to toggle the section we have to create one function so where we are going to update this show value so here I am going to create an arrow function to toggle the users so constant toggle users so now we need to use the set show function set show so now let us call this toggle users on click and we know that we need to refer this function call like this toggle users and if you don't use this parenthesis and the arrow symbol we know that it will be get called by default now when you click on the toggle users this toggle users function get called and here we are setting the value of the show click on it toggle users you can see that now it set the value false and the user section is disappeared and you click again it will come so like this you can show and hide any section in react and this is one of the interview question too now let us see the another scenario of use state you can define any number of use states like this and here each use state will be executed in order we know that when there is an update in state the react component will be re-rendered and when the react component is re-rendered these use state functions will be executed in order and another important point is use state cannot be nested which means you can't use them inside the for loop or conditional statements like if else or even inside the function also you can't use so let's say if you try to add a block like if true 
and if you keep inside of course you don't require curly brackets now you get the error saying that react hook use state is called conditionally react hooks must be called in the exact same order in every component so now let us see the another use case of use state to demonstrate the another use case of use state i have created one button and i am going to create another use state it's like the same way we are going to create another and here instead of show i am going to define count and set count default value is 2 so now i am going to create another use state and instead of show i am going to name it count and set count default value i am going to set 2 and here let us print the count count now you can see the value 2 so count 2 now when you click on the increment button let us increment the value of the count so for that let us create another function constant increment and here we need to set the value of the count right so same way we can set it so here instead of show let us use count plus one save it and let us call this on click of the increment button on click before that we should change this one to set count click on this increment you can see that count 4 5 6 7 so it is increase the value now what i am going to do i am going to call this again and now what should happen by default the value is 2 right so when you click on this increment button it should update value 4 because we are calling this one two times click on the increment button you can see the value 3 only even though we are calling this set count two times the value is still 3 so what is happening here so when you click on the increment here it is coming and it is updating the state count but still this count is referring to the value 2 only it is not referring to the updated state value so to overcome this issue we can use the previous count value we need to redefine it set count and let us define arrow function inside that here we can get the previous count so which will give the latest updated value of the state and here we are going to set previous count plus one when you click on the increment now it will work as it is and let us have this one more time now click on the increment you can see four so because here the previous count is referring to the latest updated value that is three so that's why we can see the value four now if you click on it will be six now let us see the other use case you remember when you are setting the initial state in class components we use the object so we use object always but in functional components you can use any kind of data here you can use the boolean and number and here also you can use the object also change this definition i am just commenting this one and take this assign the object now and with the two properties count i am going to set part part 2 so here our default state is object like with the two properties count and part and now we need to change this one because now this is state and another function is set state now state is nothing but this object value so to get the count and part we have to destructure it so how to do that so constant and you need to use this curly brackets because this is not array destructuring this is object destructuring so you need to use like this count comma part equal to state now we have the error saying set count is not defined because we don't have the set count function now but we have the set state function just to remove these two lines and let us take this set state and we are going to update the state right same way how we did so here instead of the previous count now it will be previous state return count previous state dot count plus one save it click on the increment now you can see it is working properly like you can see the count is working properly print this part so i am gonna print it next to the count when you save it by default you can see count 2 and part part 2 right 
when you click on the increment you can see the count value is changing but part value is empty so why because so when you are updating the state we just retrieving this object and this object contains only count property and it doesn't have the part property so it is just overriding it so when you returning actually you are returning like this right so you are returning like this count and count and value 3 so first time it will be 3 and second time it will be 4 and so on so you will be returning like this but it doesn't have the part and it will override the value so to overcome that issue you can use so you can use the spread operator to merge the property into the object so here you have to use previous state comma count it just merge the count property with the previous state so the previous state will have the value part 2 and also it just update the count value only just refresh and click on the increment now you can see that increment value is increasing and still we can access the part 2 value now let us see the best way to set the initial state to the use state hook here we are setting the true value and here we are setting the object now I am going to write a function here constant initial state console dot log let's say initial state and return true take this initial state and assign here and open the console So now just click on the toggle user so you can see that initial state is called again click on the toggle user so each time you click the toggle user this initial state is called so this means each time you click on the toggle user our component will re-render because you are updating the state and whenever the component re-render this use state is getting initialized and this will affect the performance of the application so instead of doing like this you can just do remove this like this and here just write now let's run the application again now we see initial state at the first time and click on the toggle user now we don't see that initial state is printing which means the use state is not getting initialized every time so here when you set the initial state like this using this syntax this use state will not be initialized whenever the component is re-render or whenever the state get modified and this is one of the very very important thing that you need to remember so this is all about use state hope you like the video please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon for all the updates